<laughs> Alakazam uh, stands up and like looks down at the table, looks at you, and he looks into your eyes, but then uh, Mr. Mind waves a finger and Alakazam stops. Ooh. Oh, he was going to look into my brain. Uh, um... It just would have confused him more. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Marcos, you see this individual looking in at a, a scene in another room. He hasn't seemed to have noticed you yet. I will. Is it brighter up here, I'm assuming? Yeah, Snowball can. We're in an actual mansion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to withdraw Snowball then. Snowball is uh, And then I'm going to, I'll like make my way up here and be like, ah, uh, just very quietly be like, Excuse me? The guy react, like turns around. He's about to shout, ah, but then his sarcophagus, or whatever this Pokemon is. Cophagrius. So Cophagrius like puts a hand to his mouth like right away. <laughs> this Cophagrius, that, that is how you pronounce that, right? Yes. Okay, because I'm super bad at Pokemon pronunciation, by the way. Uh, that's fine. Okay, Cophagrius <laughs> looks at you and it looks at this guy, and it holds like a, a hand up to its lips, and it goes shh, and it points into the other room. Um, sorry if I'm intruding. I've uh, had a bit of a interesting day. Can you explain to me where I am right now? Co the Cofagrigus removes his hand, and the guy like slowly reaches into his vest and pulls out a wallet. He flashes a badge at you. He is also from Interpol. I will take out my wallet and flash a badge at him, and I'm like, this is convenient. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, whoa, yeah, that, that is convenient and weird. What, a what are the odds? <laughs> How did you get here? He says, his name, he holds out a hand and says, I'm Detective Rex. Mason, Mason Jones, Ultra Beast Task Force. I get the feeling that might be a story for another time. What are you doing? He says, well, uh, I'm investigating uh, this mansion. Um, seems we're, we're following a lead set forth by this group called uh, Fresh Floof. That apparently another team came by here and ran into an Azelf. Huh. That's it. Um, oh my god, I'm forgetting her name. <laughs> uh, she never mentioned Jade, an Azelf. Jade, Jade, yes. <laughs> She never mentioned a, uh, a, a an Azelf or anything, right? No, she did not. Yeah. However, if you want to do a quick education check, like there are reports upon reports of Team Fresh Floof's like findings. So. Ah, uh, sure. Oh dang, yeah. Oh, that's real good. Okay. Oh, wait, I wait. I rolled four d4s. <laughs> I rolled okay. four d4s and rolled four on three of them. I mean, go ahead and re-roll it again, sure. But I'm sure <laughs> I'm not even certain you can beat that. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Wow, so, okay. <laughs> you remember re reading a few reports from this from a Ranger Luna, and Ranger Luna reported that a team called Peasant Poppers, this is the team with Jello. Yeah. <laughs> they actually encountered an Ace Elf and captured it. Apparently this was the mansion that they did it at. I see. Um, what do you... I would peek around the corner. He says, yeah, like just a little bit ago, all these all these Pokemon just showed up. This mansion, this mansion was abandoned until like like not five, ten minutes ago. What and did so you I'd, do? I'd look around and I'd see an Alakazam and a Mr. Mime playing chess. Yes, but like this is crazy intense. Like you, you notice these two just like moving the chess pieces in rapid succession. And every time the like, game goes by within a couple seconds, Whoever the loser was gets zapped. They also seem to be channeling that red aura. Have you been downstairs? He goes, no. Uh, I, I just came over here. I heard this weird sound, and then those Pokemon appeared. There's a strange lake downstairs. Uh, I encountered a similarly a Pokemon that appeared to have a similar condition to them downstairs. Um, and when I defeated it, this aura went into this lake downstairs. 
Alright, uh, yeah, let's go check it out if, if you want, or... Yeah, no, okay. Do you think it would be safer to be... I mean, there's two of us. We could probably take them out, but... Uh, yeah, alright. Yeah, let's do that. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm... Before we try... Before we barge into that. I mean, I'm gonna have Pope at the ready. I'm gonna have Boxer out. Boxer still has the bug type, and there's two psychics, so this is good for me. And I'm actually detecting a theme here. <laughs> I'm going to slowly approach and be like, hello there. Wait, Mason. Oh, okay. Yep, that, that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna slowly, I'm slowly, cautiously approaching, and I'm gonna have Boxer's Pokeball at the ready. So if one of them tries to jump at me, I'm going to toss him out. All right. Yeah, the Cofagrigus goes behind and like holds holds like a hand to its mouth like oh no he didn't and <laughs> Ooh. the two pokemon look at you and they've got that like that intense air that you saw the galade have and they don't seem to react their game still seems to be going but they are eyeing you with like murderous intent okay well, um, so you just walk up go. and just slap the board and be like, check me. <laughs> table flip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right over, flip the table. No, that's if Eddie was here. Uh, <laughs> game for nerds. <laughs> uh, no, um, ah, oh, geez. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a moment of me just staring at them as they're staring at me thinking, I didn't think this part. I, I didn't think very far past this. Um, are you both feeling okay? I no. ask kind of like <laughs> seeing they're very much not but all right the the mr mime stands up twitching a little bit walks over and then like sits down in an invisible chair just waiting because <laughs> it's mr mime <laughs> I, i've seen detective pikachu um <laughs> okay uh i'd lean over to what would you say his name was rex lean over to Rex and be like, how good at charades are you? Uh, like, no, I suck. I'm the worst. But, uh, we can Oh, great. Much. Same. Uh, <laughs> huh. Okay. Um, I would look at the Alakazam and ask, and, and, and be like, are you, are you feeling okay? Are you, are you feeling okay? The Alakazam, like, strokes his whiskers, floats its two spears into the air, readjusts the chessboard, and then, like, just starts, like, tapping his fingers, you know, like, one at a time, like, cascading finger taps onto the table and looks at the other end. I think I get it. I'm going to move over here and play checker and sit down to play chess. <laughs> the Mr. Mime, like, <laughs> the Mr. Mime, like, reacts wildly, like, throws its hands in the air and, like, starts putting a hand to its mouth and, like, hooting and hollering. Like, you know, completely silently, of course. Mime, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheering for the Alakazam. Okay. Rex looks at you and goes, are you about to play chess against what is it, basically a supercomputer? You know, this is not the weirdest part of my day. <laughs> so... <laughs> um... So, yes, that's what I'm going to do. All right. I have got literally no plan for this, but white moves first. <laughs> um, should I just roll education? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Just to simplify this so you don't need to actually pull up a chessboard. <laughs> that would be hilarious. We're now playing a different game. Pikachu! <laughs> it's a nine. Alright, you move... So I like... win, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's how the game works. I, I win now, right? <laughs> You move a pawn forward, and the Alakazam, or the Mr. Mime, just like like quietly slams its hand on the table and just laughs like hysterically, absolutely silently, of course. But then the Alakazam moves a a knight into a different position, completely unexpected way. Uh, okay. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna continue, just making move, uh, just making moves. All right, you move a couple pieces around and you're playing against this Alakazam and you're doing okay for what it seems like. As you're doing this, the Alakazam's like red aura flares up a little bit, but calms down every once in a while. The Mr. Mime, however, is just watching intently and his aura seems to be dissipating. Does it look like it's like transferring between the two of them? If anything, it looks like from the Mr. Mime, it's getting less and less intense. Like it's like it's chipping away and falling onto the ground. Meanwhile, the Alakazam 
his he, he doesn't gain more like there's no telegraphing that more is coming to him but his is just getting more and more intense as the game goes on okay uh, he's gonna go super saiyan on me uh, gonna continue that's 13. He, he he grabs one of his spoons and then moves a piece so i'm just adding another d6 to it he uh, has he has at this point captured about half your pawns in one of your major pieces. You, however, have captured two pawns and that knight he moved earlier. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually surprised that I'm... I'm actually surprised that I'm sort of holding my own. And every time you make another move, go ahead and, yeah, you roll again. The Mr. Mime gives a silent clap at, at your unorthodox strategy, and he picks up his chair and moves closer. Rex is... <laughs> His invisible Rex, chair? His invisible chair. <laughs> Rex is kind enough to move out of the way, <laughs> as Mr. Mime has completely switched over to your side, apparently fascinated by your tactics. I oh. just, I love Mr. Mime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you have you seen Detective Pikachu, Eric? No! You will love him even more. <laughs> that, that is a great he is, movie. He is, it's a great scene. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep going. Alexan grabs his second spoon, now like, like, kind of like dropping the weights, Rock Lee style, and begins moving more pieces. Oh God! Oh, he has captured your queen and is now looking smugly at you, holding uh, a massive aura that has just grown within him. Mr. Mimes is almost depleted. I don't. I have no idea how he just did that. <laughs> I could have sworn it was not me. Really? He was not in the position to do that two seconds ago. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, see, like, uh, yeah, RP that. Call, see, if, yeah, RP that. Uh, look, yeah, call turn-based game. I didn't. <laughs> I, okay. Oh, uh, he he caught a little, he, little troubling. No, and I'm not saying he's che he cheated. I'm saying like, wow, I didn't see that coming. Not not accusing of him cheating. He um, looks at you and rubs his whiskers proudly and looks at you intently again, eager to get back in. Uh, uh, okay. Not sure what's gonna happen if I lose. Uh, that's an 11. Yeah. He then captures a rook. It's, it, his aura is getting bigger and bigger. Meanwhile, Mr. Mime is looking worried at you along with yeah. Alfred Rios. I'm going to, I'm going to have Boxer, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let Boxer out. He's gonna chill next to me. <laughs> hey, Boxer, uh, just go stand no reason, behind no Alakazam. No reason in particular. I just kind of want you to be hanging out. Just gonna be hanging out. Um, all right, we're moving another one. All right, you capture one of his rooks, and he's now like, like getting annoyed that like he didn't see that one coming. Cause you're just moving, like you're just making some crazy ass moves, man. They're really weird. <laughs> he does not capture anything else this turn. He actually just moves a couple pawns around, or a pawn. Sorry, by you know what I mean. My human logic eludes him. Uh, My human oh. brain. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you put your king in harm's way, and he is about to call check on you, but then he hesitates. Hey guys, it's Marcos, also known as Missing Novice, also known as Mason. Just wanted to thank all of you for continuing to support Pokemon The Road to Victory. It's thanks to viewers like you that we can even continue this series. However, did you know that you could support the series directly on Patreon? For as little as $5 a month, you can gain access to our monthly lore packets and uncut live streams. Pledge today and catch up with the whole series before anyone else. Also, if you wanted to see my personal adventures, you can subscribe or follow me on twitch.tv slash missingnovice, where I play a whole bunch of stuff, but I also run my own D&D things. I have monthly sessions of Pokemon Advance Course, my own Pokemon Tabletop United campaign, and recently started Ravnica Frontier, a Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica campaign. So, if you want to check up on those, be sure to follow me over there. We'll see you all on Twitch! This episode is brought to you by Nomura the Rogue Jellyfish Plush. Use the coupon code LCCGAME for 10% off your total order at LoadingCrewCrafts.com. Like, it couldn't be that easy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Go ahead. I have, I have more plants. I, I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm realizing. Oh, I just left myself wide open, but he thinks I'm bluffing. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to roll again. That's better. We'll call that like a bluff roll. He stands oh, oh, up. Oh, 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 okay. 
Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. I, I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna roll. Oh, okay. Um. Oh. You capture another uh, rook. Actually, you capture his queen. Like you completely threw him off his game. You're just so brilliant. All right. So, yeah, I am definitely trying to bluff. Like I am doing this intentionally, but I am aware this thing is way smarter than I am. Um. He's... He kicks the chair back and stands up. The red aura causing him to grow a little bit, but he still he still hasn't done anything possible. Yet. He definitely is. Um. Okay. Well, make another move. You capture a pawn. <laughs> he was trying to turn into a queen, and he starts to get frustrated. He he puts down a spoon, scratching his head, and moves. He he moves another pawn forward. <laughs> <laughs> Let the Wookiee win. <laughs> uh, that's twelve. You make another goofy ass decision that just baffles him. He throws his spoons away, completely abandoning them. <laughs> What's up with the Mr. Mime at this point? Mr. Mime is now like, like just sitting there looking between you, sweating bullets. The aura, but like, yeah, the, the, aura, the aura, the aura completely gone. Okay. So you can defeat it with the power of chess? Okay. Um, and shit. <laughs> uh, okay. If only I brought my deck of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, Ooh, I, okay. my wife and I actually used to run the pro circuit. Like, did you ever do that? No, I, I've played, I've played like, uh, in a couple Pokemon tournaments, but not Yu-Gi-Oh ones. I'm just saying this sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh ass situation and where a random <laughs> unrelated game seems to be <laughs> deciding. <laughs> Part um, of the chess pieces. Yeah, I mean, in season zero, I don't know if they ever played chess in season zero, but they played a lot of random <laughs> in season zero. He, he, um, made, he made up a new game every <laughs> time after. It was brilliant, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it was really cool. Uh, okay, thirteen. I realize you should have rolled. I, yeah. We'll call that a bluff. Go ahead and bluff him. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna just smile, cross my hands, cross my arms, and. uh just smirk at him. This is all intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is like a death note scene. Where uh, on the outside, you're like, ha, ha, ha. But in your head, you're like, he knows that I know that he knows. <laughs> Alakazam uh, stands up and like looks down at the table, looks at you, and he looks into your eyes, but then uh, Mr. Mime waves a finger and Alakazam stops. Ooh. Oh, he was gonna look into my brain. Uh, um. It just would have confused him more. <laughs> <laughs> he moves his king into a semi-vulnerable spot, and then he stops. Okay, bait and switch. Don't fall for it. <laughs> so, I'm gonna. I'm also going to pull a Scott Pilgrim, <laughs> and as I am making my move, because I'm realizing now that he was going to try and do that. As I'm making a move, I'm also going to be trying to think really hard about making a different move oh my in God. my head. <laughs> with Voltorb that, with that whole, flip! Like, Voltorb flip! Yes! The, with the whole, with the whole, like, oh, I, I only thought really hard about putting soy milk in that cup in my mind's eye or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I'm gonna try and do. Now uh, that I know, realize that's what he's doing. That's a brilliant strategy. Go ahead, and I will give you 66 roll on that. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, oh, well, <laughs> I, I, I didn't hit the right button there. Uh, <laughs> you divided by zero. Yeah. <laughs> you just pick up your king, throw it off the board, and start smirking. There we go. <laughs> you, you, you formed the jumbo chessatron. <laughs> yeah. He looks at you, and seeing this new move, looks and glo his eyes glow. He then smirks and moves his king again. Give one more roll. Uh, six or four? Uh, give you six. Okay. Your bluff absolutely worked. You oh my god! <laughs> you, you put him in checkmate, and he immediately slams the table, flips the board, grows, oh. grows a size, <laughs> and that's initiative. <laughs> Good. Nice job, Mason. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if I should be proud or terrified, but I'm going to go with proud. <laughs> the Alakazam goes first, Jesus Christ. He grabs his spoons and then lifts you into the air, all Darth Vader. 
Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. Boxer yeah. can respond. Yeah, uh, multi attack. That thing that you do every battle. Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> Boxer moves forward. And go ahead and roll it. All right, yeah. Oh my god. Boxer is such a monster. Boxer charges him. <laughs> Boxer charges him, slams into the wall, KOs him. His aura disappears. He puffs back down like a deflated balloon as his aura just flies out. Some of it falls into the ground, some of it lands on Boxer, and then the rest floats upwards into the ceiling. <laughs> okay, the landing on Boxer thing has me worried. Um, like, okay, well, that'll work out for the best. Um, I'm gonna go over and inspect Boxer. You doing okay, buddy? The aura just, uh, like, as soon as it hits him, it just seemed to go away. And he turns around and he gives it a normal, like, like to the face. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a pet and I'm going to recall him into his Pokeball. And I'm gonna glance over at the, at the Mr. Mime and, like, are you feeling okay? He gives you a thumbs up, looks at Alakazam, and then wags a finger naughtily. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I'm gonna look at Rex and be like, so I have very little idea what just happened, but it seems to have worked out. He's like, yeah, you totally beat that Alakazam at a chess game, and then he just rage quit and got upset. That's kind of bogus, man. You totally, <laughs> you totally beat him. That was awesome. The Kafagrigas gives you four thumbs up. <laughs> that doesn't really answer any of my questions about this place, though. Um, well, it, it clearly I, seems like, you know, since something new happened, like, you know, it's it's calling Pokemon and having them react to the area. I have no idea. Like, I came, um, to, I came to investigate the legendaries here and whatever this building was. I don't know anything about any kind of... Uh... Did... So they said they encountered Azelf here. Did they know that it... Like, was it living here? Or was uh, it just kind of in the area at the time? It, it appeared to be living here. They, they said it came from a lake. Um, wait, you said you found a lake at the bottom of the basement, right? Yes. Okay, um, putting two together. Two and two. I'm making four. He's... He's like, I'm, I'm willing to bet. And as he's saying, make it four, his Kafagrigas is like doing all the math in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm willing to bet that that lake you saw down there is probably his old home. This is probably some kind of place of power. I would imagine, I'm thinking there was something that he was guarding or guard, guarding or guarding. Guarding. <laughs> guarding. I, I think there was something that he was either guarding or taking care of. And now that they are, now that he is not, leading to situations like this. That's that's a pretty big thank you got there. I, I agree. <laughs> um, that's some big thank you got. <laughs> um, I'm gonna... Are, are you good with medicine? He goes, yeah. I, yeah. I, I got this. You want him revived or taken care of? Yes. Him? Yeah, okay, okay. Yes, we'll revive him. He goes up and he applies some medicine. He breaks all the revive and, like, whiffs it under his nose. And the Alakazam is conscious again, rubbing his head and he looks at the two of you, realizing what he does, he puts his spoons down in front of you, does a deep kowtow in an apology. It's okay. I don't think it was entirely your fault. Now I'm gonna, like, pat him on the head. Um, he impales himself with his spoons. Uh, <laughs> <Sibuka! no. laughs> he looks up like those, like those, like, goofy, like, hanging anime tears, and he's, he's like, me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're going to be investigating this place. There, it doesn't seem to be safe for Pokemon. When did you arrive here? When did you two, do you two live here? He stands up and shakes his head. They go over here and they reassemble the chessboard and they move the pieces off the board. And then they, Mr. Mime like stands up here and does some like wavy with his fingers and all the chess pieces move back onto the board. So this house was empty and you were taken here uh, by some kind of power? Po uh, Mr. Mime points at you, smiles and nods. Okay, hmm. Um, I'm gonna look at Rex and be like, do you know how long, uh, how long it's been since all this strange stuff has started? He says like 10, 20 minutes ago. Your chess game took a while, so like add the time on top of that. So there's there's literally nobody here prior to me arriving here. Yeah, when 
when I when I got in here, it was empty. Could I put two and two together and be like it was when I arrived? All probably. He's like, yep, two and two. Kafagrigas mimes your t or mimics your two and two. <laughs> <laughs> it makes five. Wait, yeah. four. <laughs> You know that da 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 <laughs> Like, I, I know that wormholes in the Pokemon universe have the power to empower things, but also I know from my role earlier that that's not what's going on here. Mm -hmm. I think we need to check out that lake downstairs. Rex says, yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Let's go ahead and check it out. Um, and then I would like to investigate the mansion a little bit more, if that's all right with you. Maybe we'll find some clues while we're here. This place was obviously built for a reason. Uh, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna glance to the Alakazam, and also the Mr. Mime, I suppose, and, um, hold out a couple of Pokeballs and ask if they want to come along. Mr. Mime thinks for a minute, hops down, puts on, like, a, like, a cap, and then, like, a gown, and it walks over to you, and presents an invisible diploma. I will take the invisible diploma. He disappears I... inside the Pokeball. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> it just it just graduated chess school. <laughs> I'll look at the Alakazam. Thinks for a minute, and he puts the spoons on the table, and then shakes his head hesitantly, and he gives you one of his spoons, and he holds a spoon for now. Okay, so he's not coming, but I have one of his. He's not going in the Pokeball. Correct. That's exactly Okay. It. Well, I'll keep that, and then... Do you have anything to take a water sample with? He holds up a spoon? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> <laughs> I was more talking to Rex, but thank you. Yeah, Re Re Rex looks at you and goes, Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm a cryptologist, actually. He has some equipment in his backpack. Okay. Well, let's let's check downstairs first, and then, and then we can explore the rest of the mansion. He's like, heck yeah, man. And let's go back to Murdoch. After the most epic chess game of all time, we go back to boring fighting.